Hey everybody, it's me, Severely Mame, your local tangerine dream. Today I wanted to talk about all of my hair pieces. Now, we've been through the process of me making this entire wig. I haven't updated you on how I styled it into this style yet, but that will come when I give this one a wash and reset the entire thing. But outside of this, I have a lot of other hair pieces. Now I've had orange hair for quite some time now and my best friend Lauren has had orange hair for quite some time. So I've got a lot of orange hair pieces. I'm gonna put her down. Um, I've put on almost all of my orange hair pieces now and you can see that they are in a curious state. I feel like that's a very good way to put it. A curious state. They some of them are still curled, some of them have been washed, some of them are currently styled. And I figured I would just kind of give you a tour of all of the things I have and maybe show you how I style a couple of them for vintage hairstyling. Now, first one is this, not looking very great right now, piece. This is one that is going to get restyled very soon. It is a ponytail. Um, that I have taken and turned into a bumper bang just by curling, teasing, and rolling it. But on the inside, it is just a mesh ponytail that I've taken and restyled into a bang piece. Now, this is perfect for that Carmen Miranda look. Um, I love a bumper bang, especially if I have like a headscarf on or something like that. I can just style the bumper bang and like the sides of my head and put on whatever and it looks really good. Um, so this one I am for sure going to give a wash and a restyle because it needs it and it's something that I like to wear fairly regularly. Um, I'm just kind of going what I can grab first. Okay, this is two tracks that um, are clip-in that were from when my hair was longer and I could actually clip them in and it would blend nicely. Now I use them to create like poodle uh, do's when I am wearing a head wrap or a turban. I've gotten pretty resourceful with what I can do with pieces uh, when I have short hair and how I can utilize them to make it appear that I have longer hair. Um, but everything now is matching my current color with the exception of one piece on my head, which needs to be dyed. But yeah, so there's a lot of tracks from when my hair was longer that I would clip in and make my hair fuller and longer looking. Um, oh, okay. I just pulled two pieces off. So this one is my, like one of my really old, as you can tell, it's looking very ratty. Um, halo pieces. Um, there would be a clear plastic string that goes from side to side along with these clips and it would be clipped into the back to add a little bit more length and some extra fullness. My hair used to be this yellowy orange, um, but that changed a few years ago and I got back to the classic orange. Um, so this one I think is going to get a nice wash and dye to update it to be my current coloring. This is a vintage hair piece um, by Jerome Alexander. Uh, it was, I think Lauren got this at a thrift store uh, and dyed it orange, now I'm the one who has it. This, I usually curl it and style it into a poodle. Um, it's a little cap with tracks sewn in a spiral. It's human hair. All of these pieces are um, finding the right orange in uh, artificial hair is really hard. Um, so this one gets curled tightly and then kind of styled into a poodle hairdo. I do a lot of poodles because it's one of my favorite 40s styles. This is one of my bang pieces. Just looks like a little spiral of hair. It's just mesh on the inside with tracks sewn around it. This one is also vintage. It's a Helen Curtis piece. I wouldn't, like, all of these are probably 70s or 80s, um, but you know, still, still vintage uh, hair pieces. This one I usually style into my like waved bangs. So that one just needs a roller set. This one has been washed and has been just like ready to be styled for a while. So all I have to do is 
roller set her again and I can have my little 40s S-Wave bangs. Let's see what else is in here. Uh, one of my uh, tracks from my clip-in set, this one is longer. Um, it was This was one of the side ones. It was cut at an angle for my horseshoe. There's a match that goes in the other direction. Oh, this one's a little front piece. So this one's lace, so it can be parted like so, and it looks natural. Like my wig, it has that same base. This one I can do kind of different styles with. I also can kind of use it to disguise my edges a little bit more um, because it has the lace, it has some versatility that I can pair it with other hair pieces for realistic looking uh, styles that are vintage to disguise my short hair. Um, I love that this one's the lace and has the clips. Uh, I usually roller set this one and I can use those different bangs uh, for the most part. I think that it's even cut for bangs Yes, it is cut for a bang. Um, cut for a bang with then, like it can cover the top because I have a little bit of a coming in bald spot from when I used to do ponytails way too tight. Um, so don't do that. Uh, this is another halo piece. This is a shorter one. This is probably the first of all of these that will fit me for like halos or extensions because it is the shortest of my halos. This one has been washed, just needs a brush um, and a restyle because I haven't used this one in quite some time because my hair got long and then I cut it all off. So now slowly I will get back to, I'm going to say probably in six months I'll be able to use this one and have some extra length and fullness in the back of my hair if I'm not wearing my wig. And then, let's see, I think I have another set of clip-ins. This might be, yeah, this is the opposite side for the other one that I was talking about that was cut at an angle for my horseshoe that I used to have, but I cut into my current wig. Um, and then this is my longest halo piece. Um, does the same as all of the other ones. This one is just made cut into a longer horseshoe for when my hair is um, at its longest usually. I, my hair kind of stops growing at a certain point and this one is cut to that length. Now Lauren, a lot of these are hand-me-downs from Lauren, uh, Lauren Franz Maurer on Instagram, my best friend, she's very cute. Um, almost all of these are hand-me-downs from Lauren and I'm very thankful for that. But I figured I would just show you what they all kind of look like now and then take you through the process of getting some of these kind of up to snuff. It'll most likely be the like more bang pieces because I don't need the length ones. But in the meantime, like I was saying, this is my longest halo. I can't really use this for a while. So what I might do is try and fashion it into a piece for the top so I can have some like set bang pieces in different 1940s styles that will be um, nice to swap out because I don't need four poodle pieces. You know, having a poodle and S-wave bang and maybe like a bumper bang and one other big 40s style, I can wear them with like head wraps and turbans like I said, or I can style them onto my wig. But here is my collection. Now this is not showing you all of the hair that I have collected from hairbrushes over the years that also lives in the bag with these hair pieces. I will spare you that. But yes, I save the hair that I brush out of my hair pieces and my head and turn them into rats for rolling my hair and hair pieces around to get um, good full shapes. Um, if you're not familiar with that, we can do a whole video on making hair wraps. Uh, just comment down below if that's something you're interested in. I know some people are kind of grossed out by saving your hair and doing things with it, but it is actually extremely helpful. Um, it's a good thing to kind of do. You just have one hairbrush that you collect from and I don't know, it works. It worked for them, it works for me. So these are the hair pieces I'm working with right now and I'm going to wash a couple of them and then 
I'll show you how I roller set a couple and style them. So I guess I'll just uh, move on while I probably look crazy because I just took all of these off of my head. So I have washed the one piece that really needed it, um, which is the bumper bangs that are made from a ponytail. This one was coated in hairspray and stuff. Needed to get washed out. So I shampooed it and conditioned it with cold water. I brushed it when it was dry. And now I'm not going to brush it again until it's dry because that is not good for the hair. Being a uh, human, it uh, needs to be brushed when it is completely dried. So I'm just hanging it out on my clothesline, not in the sun, but outside where it gets the breeze, just to dry before I give it another brush and then start to style it. Now, because I'm going to style it wet, you might be thinking, why are you hanging it from the line instead of just jumping right into the style? I wanna make sure I got off all the product first before I put even more product onto it. Um, Cause I like to get them back down to a clean base before I get into the insanity that is styling all of these pieces. But this is going to now sit outside um, not in direct sunlight and just dry in the wind. So I'm just going to sit down and get into fixing up these pieces. I have chosen four that I'm going to re-roll and set to become new vintage styles. Now this is the piece I was telling you I was going to put an S-Wave bang in. I'll show you a photo here of what I usually use this bang piece for. It's my Meet Me in St. Louis Judy Garland hair. So the S-Wave is very subtle. Um... But I can, when it's freshly rolled, it will be a little bit tighter. Uh, so it kind of has a nice progression as it goes on. So this one's getting rolled in foam rollers so that I can take it off of the canvas block. Same with this piece. I'm also, this one is the kind of topper that has hair to make a bang and then lace uh, top and hair that can cover um, the top of my head, my crown. Um, this one is getting rolled into kind of two sections, like the bang and then the back. Now it um, is also getting rolled with foam rollers, and that's so I can take it off of the wig head. I only have a small number of these foam rollers. I actually had bought them to do a friend's hair for their wedding, um, and these were just the ones that I had left over from their hair, uh, which I actually am going to buy more because I really like the size of these. I used to use the greenish blue ones that are like seven eighths of an inch. I think they're like close to a full inch. And these ones are closer to uh, like maybe three quarters, maybe a little bit smaller. Now I'm moving on to one of my vintage hair pieces. This one is... Uh, going to be my poodle. I just misted it all with some water and then put in my setting lotion and I'm going to use wire mesh rollers on this one and uh, that's because I was out of the foam ones but also with the my wire mesh rollers I can just pin them onto the head and leave them. The air circulates a little bit better on these so they dry a little bit faster which is nice because there is more hair with a little more length on this piece compared to the other ones. So I'm just putting in my rollers, I'm rolling them all down um, towards me, and uh, I'm putting a little bit of the product on right before that. If it gets a little dry, I missed it with a little bit more water because you, I want it to be wet, it is a wet set. So when I set this one, um, I'm hoping that it will dry quickly, but... All of these pieces I end up rolling, I have to wait overnight for them to dry, which I'm actually still waiting for them to dry to film the sec like the styling part of this video. Here's the ponytail that I hung outside. It got dried fairly quickly out there. Um, so here I am brushing in a little bit of water because it felt like all of the product was out. Um, so I didn't have to wash it again or anything. And now I am just roller setting it. I think I use about eight rollers on this whole ponytail piece. Again, I'm using the wire mesh because I'm out of the others, but also I would have used the wire mesh no matter what on these because it does dry uh, faster because air can kind of circulate 
into the roller and dry the hairs on the inside. Unlike foam rollers, the inside will take the longest to dry. So I like to use those on my like thinner hair pieces or shorter ones. So I'm just rolling all of these up. And once I finish that, I will let them sit overnight and dry. And when they're dry, it's just going to be a matter of brushing them all out and um, teasing and hairspraying and clipping and things like that. But we'll get into that in a minute when I actually take out the rollers and start doing some of the styling. I'm onto my last two rollers of this ponytail that will become bumper bangs. This might have been too small of rollers, honestly, but I think it may be fine. We'll see. So these are the four hair pieces I've rolled. Now I'm just waiting on them to dry and I will show you how I style them all. Do me a favor and make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me continue to create content just like this, make sure to follow the link below to my Patreon account where you can see exclusive content and also help me decide what goes on to my channel. Now that everything is dry, or I thought everything was dry, but we'll get into that later, I'm taking out the foam rollers on the shorter pieces because those ones were certainly dry. The Longer ones, I later realized were not completely, but I'm still going to work with these a little. I took out all of the rollers and gave them a little bit of a brush, but I decided I wanted to take all the rollers out first and then get into styling after. So you can see these all come out as like tight ringlets, which I don't think most people want for their hair, but with some combing and brushing, it really does completely change it. Now, I'm taking the rollers out of the poodle piece. That one was drier than the ponytail, but sadly, the ponytail is not ready to be worked with. So, I get right into styling on the poodle piece. First, I just took out all the rollers, and then I started to brush it all out. See, now I'm realizing that the ponytail is wet still, so I'm just going to focus on styling these. I gave it a little bit of a tease at the crown, but I'm not doing too much to this piece, really. Um, it's fairly, like, to get a classic poodle, you don't need to do a ton of work. It just needs to be tightly curled and then teased a little and grouped together into that, like, you know, perfect poodle shape. So here I'm, like, grabbing a few curls and manicuring them a little bit more. Often what I do is I will then put this piece into a hairnet and I wear it in the hairnet. So that usually sm like smooths out enough flyaways and things like that that um, you don't really even see them. I like a little bit of flyaway in, in my hair pieces and stuff, maybe because I think it makes it look like it's growing out of my head um, or more authentic to the 1940s. Here I've moved on to the bang piece. I originally wanted this to have like an S wave to it. And I realized I either did the curl tighter than I usually would have, or it's not long enough to accomplish what I'm really looking for. So after playing with it for a little bit, with my brush and my comb and some clips, I kind of realized it was a tight enough curl that it really wanted to do a tighter roll. So with that, I was like, oh, I could get a nice small bumper bang. So I went through and started to comb and tease it all under and shape it so the hairs, you know, roll under themselves to give me that classic bumper bang shape. I realized that as this curl kind of fades, I'll get more of the S wave shape that I want. So I'm just going to go into what this hair wants to do and make it a tiny bumper bang. That's one thing about vintage hairstyling that I really have to say is you have to kind of work with your hair piece and your hair to do what it wants to do. Sometimes you can't go in expecting a style that may not work out. Because you just come out disappointed. If you go with some ideas and some techniques, you can figure out some great looking hair, even if it's not exactly what you were looking for. Now, I decided to put the second longer piece on top of this to create that kind of um, almost Lucille Ball kind of look, 
with the bang and then a little bundle of curls on top. The other piece wasn't super helpful to me right now because my hair isn't super long. So I thought it would be a perfect addition to this to make a fun little bang piece. So with that, I'm just hairspraying and kind of picking individual curls and fixing them up as I go through. And this is where I start hairspraying and really getting it uh, set in its style. Now I'm going to take it off the block in a second, which often when I do something, especially with a bumper bang style, I will go in on the underside and really get it good with hairspray so there's less flyaways there. But I figure since you watched me style those wigs, I'll just show you where my hair is starting and then how it looks once I put these pieces on. shown you these two finished hair pieces well three combined into two wearable ones the bumper bang ponytail still isn't dry so I'm going to give that a video of its own um, and also that one will be a little more instructional on exactly what I do so you can turn a ponytail into a bumper bang also so that'll be coming in the future so make sure to subscribe so you catch that also I no, this video wasn't super informative exactly. Working with hair and vintage styling, a lot of what you have to do is just like learn how to brush and comb through to get the desired effects. Um, I'm really happy with how these two pieces came out. The poodle bang is real big and a statement-y piece. I was able to get my hair, even with how short it was, like up to disguise the front. Um, I could have pasted all of my back up too and had a full updo. So now that piece is like a wearable piece. Um, the color match isn't perfect, but once my hair is washed like once and is a little less red, it'll probably be exactly the same. This one's a good color match for when my hair is really fresh. Um, but that is my revamp of some of my hair pieces and a little bit of a tour of my human hair hair piece collection. Uh, there'll be more to come for all of this, especially as my hair grows longer. Um, I'll be integrating more hair pieces into it. I think I want to make a half wig, one that would start about here, and I would use all of the front of my hair and um, just have it for the 40s length that I like. So if you want to see me make a half wig and style that, let me know down below. But thank you guys so much for watching. I am Severely Mame, and I will see you all very soon.